Welcome to the first lesson on Ad Maths. Okay, so the additional maths, OCR, freestanding maths qualification. And this is lesson one on algebraic fractions, which um, from the textbook looks at exercise 1.1. Okay, and um, I'm going to just show you one specific skill within algebraic fractions, simplifying um, algebraic fractions if you need to add or subtract them together. Okay, so. We're going to look at a worked example. So the worked example we're going to look at is simplify the following. A over A squared minus 1. Take away 2 over A plus 1. OK. So you know that when you need to add or subtract fractions, it is much easier to do so if you have a common denominator. These two denominators here are not equal, they're not the same. Therefore, it's difficult to add or subtract these, these fractions. It's difficult to combine them. So let's create a common denominator. The temptation is to just multiply the two denominators together. So if you had fifths and you had sevenths, you know you'll have a common denominator if you do five times seven. So 35 will be a common denominator of five and seven. If you had 8 and 4, you know you'd get a common denominator. You multiplied 8 and 4, you'd get 32. 32 would be a common denominator. However, 8 and 4 would be much easier if you just multiplied 4 by 2 and turned it into 8. Because 4 goes into 8. 8 is divisible by 4. And it's similar with these two. It is tempting to just multiply them together. But actually, there is an easier way. One of them is actually divisible by the other. If you look carefully at a squared minus one, that's a very special expression. It's an expression called the difference of two squares. Okay. The difference of two squares is where you have one square, a squared is a square, okay? It is a being squared. And another square, one is a square because one squared is one. And the difference between them means you're subtracting them. So you have the difference between two squares, the difference of two squares. And we can factorize that into two brackets. So the first fraction can be written as a over a plus one, a minus one. And then you can clearly see that that is a multiple of a plus 1. It is a plus 1 being multiplied by a minus 1. So I can keep that fraction as it is. And all I would need to do is I would need to alter the second fraction. Okay, try and predict what I'm going to write down next for the second fraction. First fraction, I'm going to keep the same. a over a plus 1, lots of a minus 1. And for the second fraction, I want to have a common denominator. So I want this to be a plus 1, a minus 1. So what have I done to the denominator in the second fraction? I have multiplied it by a minus 1. So I need to multiply the top by a minus 1. And that means that I still have the same fraction as I had before. 2 over a plus 1 is equivalent to 2 lots of a minus 1 over a plus 1 lots of a minus 1 because I've multiplied the top and the bottom by a minus 1, which then is the same as multiplying by 1, because a minus 1 over a minus 1 is the number 1. Okay, so now I have two fractions with a common denominator. So now I can subtract them. But it would be easier before I subtract them if I have the second one expanded out. So I'll have a over a plus 1, a minus 1 minus 2a minus 2 over a plus 1a minus 1. Now a lot of A-level students will go wrong at this point. When you do the next part, you're subtracting the two fractions, so you're going to subtract the numerator of the second one from the numerator of the first one. I have a and I'm going to subtract 2a minus 2. A lot of students will subtract 2a 
and they will subtract 2. But really, this subtraction means I'm subtracting 2a and I'm subtracting minus 2. So have a think about what you're going to get as your new numerator of the entire fraction. The denominator will be the same. If you subtract 30 fifths from 30 fifths, you get a different amount of 30 fifths. So the denominator, once you've got a common denominator, the denominator will maintain that same value. And then the top will be a subtract 2a will be negative a. And if I subtract negative 2, I'm adding 2. And so that is my answer. It's actually nicer, okay, and it's better to, to write it as 2 minus a on top. It's, it's more elegant than minus a plus 2 is writing 2 minus a. Both of them have positive 2 and both of them have negative a, but it's, it's a more elegant way of writing it. So the best way of writing your answer is as written there, 2 minus a over a plus 1 a minus one. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a question to do. So I'm going to write down a question. I want you then to have a, to pause the video, have a go yourself on a piece of paper, and then I will give the answer. What I want you to do is I want you to simplify p over p squared minus nine, subtract two over p plus three. OK, so that's what you need to do now. Pause the video. Have a go. I'm going to show the answer now. So please have had a go before you look at this answer. So. This is equivalent to again, we have. Difference two squares, so it's P over P plus three P minus three minus two over P plus three. And then the common denominator will be p plus 3, p minus 3. So it'll be p over p plus 3, p minus 3. Subtract two lots of p minus 3 over p plus 3, p minus 3. I've multiplied the top and bottom by p minus 3. And then expand the brackets, p over p plus 3 p minus 3, subtract 2p minus 6 over p plus 3, p minus 3. And then that simplifies to p, take away 2p is negative p, and take away negative 6 is positive 6 over p plus 3, p minus 3. And the elegant way of writing that is 6 minus p over p plus 3, p minus 3. So that there is the simplified version. Okay. What you should do now, if you got that right, superb. Now it's the time to create a level of fluency in this topic. So go to the textbook that I recommend. Okay. So the OCR, Additional Mathematics, um, Freestanding Maths Qualification, Second Edition by Val Hanrahan and Adam Ginty, okay, and have a go at exercise 1.1, okay. The best questions to do, which are similar to these, are questions six onwards, but it's good to have a go at all of the exercise. Make sure you can multiply and divide fractions which have algebra in them. OK, when you're getting those right and they are becoming quicker and quicker to do, then it's time to move on to the next topic. OK, see you in the next video.